Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first and what I assume will be many tutorials for Mentor Graphics Pads. I'll start off by letting you know my name is Corwin Perrin. I am the 2013-2014 Rover Team Electrical Lead at Oregon State University, and I'm making this video sequence primarily to teach my electrical team how to make custom circuit boards and PCBs for the Mars Rover. However, I assume it's going to be helpful to not only our team, but the robotics club who we actually work under. And for anybody else online who's got access to pads and doesn't really know where to start because it's very difficult to find decent tutorials and especially video tutorials on how to use the software. And they charge a lot of money to go to their official ones. So over the last month and a half, two months, I have spent time learning how to use it. And now I'm going to try and pass that knowledge on to you. A uh, quick initial bit for anybody who's an actual OSU student, you can access this software for free as an engineering student. If you search for OSU Engineering Software, the first link will take you to this Obtain Software for your computer or laptop link, which will open up this page. Uh, Mentor Graphics Pads is right here. You can download it there. Um, if you do it using this method, you will have to either A, be using your laptop on campus or in the dorms on your desktop, and then you won't have to do anything other than install it. If you're off campus, you'll have to use the campus VPN to connect your computer to OSU's network so that it can talk to our licensing server. And the VPN access works for Windows, Mac, Android, Linux. However, do note, pads is Windows only. There's a way to get around that, which is if you're on Mac or Linux and don't want to install a VM or dual boot, you can always use Citrix which is our method of essentially doing a compressed form of remote desktop for just a single windowed application, which has pads available. And I've used it on Linux and I've used it in Windows and it's reasonably fast. If you work on anything large, it may be a little bit slow, but it'll definitely be usable. The other option for anybody who's actually an OSU student and on campus is you can always go to any of the engineering computer labs for electrical engineers or mechanical engineers, and it will be available on those machines. So basically any of the labs in Dearborn or Rogers, those will have them. <clears throat> so that is that. So what is PADS? I guess some of you may end up here not knowing what it is. Mentor Graphics Pads is an entire suite of software. It's actually got multiple applications in it to design custom circuit boards. And it's some really very professional software. It's used by professionals who actually do this as their job. Uh, most of you probably have heard of Eagle PCB if you've known anything about PCB design or at least been interested in it, but uh, this is a very industry level piece of software. And another common one is Altium, but it just happens that OSU, or at least the engineering department at OSU, has a network license for pads. So I figure it'd be good to learn that rather than any of the other tools simply because we have it for free students. <coughs> Okie dokie. So when you install pads, the three main programs you're actually going to care about in the software suite are going to be these three, pads logic, pads layout, and pads router. And you generally use them in that order, though the last two you'll alternate back and forth between. Uh, pads logic is your schematic layout software. And oh, I just opened this without connecting to the VPN, and you'll see that it'll just crash, actually, so here. Here's the VPN client, for those of you who haven't used it. Connect to the library VPN, enter your own ID username and password. Hit continue, it'll connect, and then pads will be happy and won't yell at you for <laughs> not using, not being able to talk to a licensing server. 
So uh, this is what Pad's logic looks like when you open it. The primary thing I'll say about this entire software suite is that it's very, very counterintuitive. It's extremely powerful. Like there, there are tools in here that are absolutely amazing and make doing PCD, PCB design really fast and easy. But at the same time, it does not follow what I would consider to be best practices for like program layout and ease of use and all of those kinds of things. All the tools are there. They're just somewhat hidden, <laughs> I guess, is the best way to put it. Or at least just not, yeah, it doesn't make sense a lot of times. Anyway, um, I'm just going to give you a general look at the programs before we actually start making anything, just so you have a general idea of how the software is laid out visually. Your initial screen is going to look exactly like this. Uh, you. It'll show you your recent designs. You can open a new one, start a new design. At the top here, you can see you have a bunch of task bars or uh, toolbars with options. The first one has your normal save, uh, open, all that kind of stuff. You've got this button, which will be useful later. It homes your view to the schematic or board outline, so you can see things easily. You've got these two buttons, which are for pads layout and pads router, which will actually send whatever your design you're working on to the other applications so you can jump back and forth between working on them. Uh, it's very interesting how it does that actually, and we'll get to that more later. And then your bottom one doesn't actually do anything in this view, but it allows you to do selections, moves, duplications, deletions, allows you to add parts, connections, symbols, you can swap references and pins, you can add buses with multiple electrical connections on it, just to you know, tidy things up. You can add in text just for labeling, 2D lines for whatever reason, just to, to maybe use it to block off areas of logic or whatever you'd like. And you can combine things into groups and add 2D objects from a library if you have them, and then add a field. So let's actually start a new design so you can see what it looks like. This is the standard schematic creation window. Uh, everything that is text-wise, you can double-click on and edit the values to whatever you want. Uh, pretty standard movement, control, scroll, will zoom in and out. Uh, all of these dots are part of what's called the grid system, and it allows you to snap components and text and basically anything you can think of to a grid so that it lines up a little bit nicer. One of the things that you'll end up having to do a fair bit, specifically when you get to the actual board design section, is change the grid size to make it an appropriate size to be useful. For now, uh, I'm just going to leave it the way it is and show you a little bit. Uh, okay, so this is, as you can see up here, this is sheet one. One of the nice features of, of pads is that you can split large schematics up into multiple sheets so that if it's really big, you don't have to have it all on one giant mess of a page. You can go to Setup, Sheets, Rename Sheets, Add Sheets, and then swap between them using this and work on them at in smaller segments so it's not as confusing and a little bit better logically a lot of the times. <sighs> and then there will be a thing called off-page connectors for electrical connections that will let you connect electrical buses and lines and wires and all that kind of stuff across those sheets so that they're still technically connected even though they're on different pages. Um, this middle one here, I don't think I, I mentioned what this is. This is your selection toolbar. It's what changes what your mouse is actually able to select on the schematic screen. So it has anything, it has nothing, and then each of these individual items if they're oranged out like this, it means that you're able to select those types of items and you can mix and match them however you'd like for the most part. Uh, I don't generally use this. The other way to access that is to right click in the open space and then you have the option to select them all from here as well. If you want to do multiple selects, like say you want to select anything that's a net and a pin, you'll have to use this so that you can select multiple. But if you just want to select one kind, I generally use the right click. Um, so here, let me, let me uh, throw a random part in here. 
That's not sure. Throw something huge. Sure, I'll throw this AND gate. Uh, so as you can see, I, I clicked the add part button in order to bring this window up. I selected my part from the list and hit add. And I can bring it about here in the background. You can actually close this window and it'll still let you drop it around. But if you want to put down multiple parts at the same time, you can kind of uh, just jump between them and and let's do another U, let's throw U here, and then we can grab another one and add that in. You can just keep dropping parts as you need it, and it can take less time. Uh, let's see, about this screen, you get a list of all the items in this box, obviously, with a little preview of what they look like as far as the schematic layout goes. And then you have the option to switch between all of your libraries. All the ones from right here, to right there, all the ones that have pads in the name, are ones that come with the pad software. So these are pre-built libraries that contain lots of common footprints for all kinds of devices, really. I mean, your standard 0603 surface mount components, lots of your SOT packages, TO, TO packages. I mean, there's just tons that come pre-built. Though it can be a little tricky to use the searching system for it, if you can find it pre-built, you may as well use it. Um, that being said, you're going to spend a lot of time making custom parts in this software. It's just the nature of it. And, however, in this case, I just put down a couple of custom ones that I've already made. Uh, you can use this items filter here and and put in something like, you know, let's do Mega, because I know I have a part called Mega and you won't get anything and that's interesting let's see let's see what i actually named it in one we'll see why i didn't go oh that's why it's because it's it's a little bit different than that no star and there you go so stars will be your friend when you're doing searches and like I said, the searching system is a little bit funky, but once you get used to it and use it consistently, it'll be a little bit clearer. Um, but yeah, so it's trying to place another component. You just right click and hit cancel and it'll cancel that out. But here, for example, if I hit select anything, I can click this and click that. I can click the documentation outline. I can select multiple things. Like that. that all works great. Um, however, if I only want to select parts, for example, I can click that, and now I can no longer select all this documentation, but I can select that. Pretty straightforward. But you will end up having to use that a lot in order to select things in particular and don't accidentally delete or move or misconnect things that you don't care about. So um, when you have something selected, you're going to get a ton more options on your right-click menu. That's something you're going to have to get used to with this software. A good portion of the things you're going to want to do are all only accessible through the right-click menu. It has to be one of the strangest layouts for a program I've ever seen, but almost everything is either accessible from or is only usable from the right-click menus. So if you can't find something, click on whatever it is you want to do something to and right-click. Odds are you'll find it.